This is Nasusu. It's a mountain of marble and it's located in remote West Timor. It's home to towering walls of limestone and it could be the next great climbing crag. Southern Indonesia is fairly uncharted terrain in the realm of adventure sport, but it did not disappoint. We were drawn here by the potential for previously unkayaked bodies of water and unclimbed rock faces. And we were greeted by sea cliffs that drop into bright blue ocean. Two, one. Ah! But we were also drawn by the stories we'd heard about the village of Molo. Stories of the people there and of one woman in particular. It all starts with Mama Aleta. A mother and a housewife turned activist, Aleta has been leading the effort to oppose corporate mining and deforestation on her people's land for over a decade. She has this idea that people are not separate from the natural environment, and it has led her to be internationally recognized for her world-class environmental activism. Jadi, ketika tidak ada alam, tidak ada tanah, tidak ada batu, tidak ada hutan, tidak ada air, maka manusia juga tidak bisa bertani. The nature is just like a human being. It must be taken care of, just like human beings take care of their body, take care of their families. Because it supports us human beings throughout our lives and also for the other creatures too. At one point, more than 15 mines were scattered across the island, extracting natural resources without the local people's consent, polluting rivers and leaving forests bare, not only toxifying drinking water, but destroying indigenous lands and stripping communities of their identities. It's happened because there's been a push from the central government for developing Eastern Indonesia. But in my opinion, that's not developing it for everybody, that's developing it for a few established elite. We set out to climb the mountains that hadn't already been cut down by mining companies. Big majestic peaks of marble covered in limestone tufas, reaching out hundreds of meters above the jungle below. The value of these mountains isn't in chopping them up and hauling them away. It's in using them exactly as they stand. When we went and hiked up to the mountain, um, it's, it's really a staggering contrast between what was mined and what wasn't mined because the way that the miners left the rock is just sheer tabletops and there's no texture, there's no heart and soul to anything that resembles what was there because when it's, when it's next to what's natural, it's like black and white. That was our light bulb moment. We saw an opportunity to combine environmental conservation with outdoor recreation. And after speaking with the indigenous people of Molo and receiving their blessing, we temporarily bolted the first climbing routes in the region. In doing so, we saw a new path toward protecting these marble walls from further mining by establishing a new industry, one rooted in preserving the existing resources and community. All over the world, we're seeing corporations destroy the environment for profit. Indigenous communities and marginalized groups like the people of Timor are the first to be affected. As kayakers and climbers and members of the outdoor community, it's our responsibility to help protect these places that are so important. We think we found something of a mecca. It's, it's very good quality. There's some limestone on the formations that it, it rivals that of like Southern Thailand. It looks amazing. Right now, more than ever, our voice matters. If we don't stand up as stewards of the land, who else will? Indonesia was our first step in preventative conservation. When ecotourism is done right, we create a symbiotic environment where businesses rely on the natural state of the land and consequently allocate resources to keep that land protected. When you hang by a rope off the side of a mountain, when you float on the ocean and smell the salt in the air, it's easier to remember Mama Aleta's thoughts. The people and the natural environment are not so separate.